Thank you. Hello, I'm Molly. And I'm Josh. We are deeply humbled to share this stage with such inspiring and courageous individuals. And we're honored to share our young and growing family story, a small piece of this integral web of nonprofits and people strengthening community in the Granite State. I direct a nonprofit called GALA, Global Awareness, Local Action. I'm also a member of the Charitable Foundation's Lakes Region Advisory Board. But honestly, 12 years ago, I almost gave up on this place. Um, I was your New Hampshire talent drain poster child. I came home after college, having barely unpacked, before the reality set in that I had to choose between living in rural New Hampshire or living in a vibrant community like my college town in Massachusetts that supported my career, creative, and social goals. So, like most of my friends, I left. But after two years of being away, I realized I actually had a third option. Just because I couldn't find what I needed to sustain me back home didn't mean I couldn't help create it. So I moved back. This time I invited a motley crew of acquaintances to a potluck supper and popped the question, how can we be the change that we want to see in the world? The group was interested in supporting local food systems and energy efficiency, and we started referring to ourselves as GALA for Global Awareness Local Action. Now, since the household dryer is the least energy efficient appliance, one of our first programs was to install free solar clothes dryers. <laughs> we installed them for anyone who asked and needed them including lots of people we would have never otherwise met. People loved this program, but the energy savings weren't what were attracting people. What, was what people were really craving was connection and the fellowship of working together toward a common aim. So our programs that followed centered that kind of community building. Over the last decade, Gala has started a farmer's market an agricultural commission, a town energy committee, a contra dance series. We've built raised garden beds for people with limited mobility. We've hosted workshops where people share skills on things like sewing and canning, bicycle maintenance, chainsaw safety, and installed more than 50 gardens for schools, food pantries, assisted living centers, and homes. We've just embarked on our most exciting and important project yet. We're establishing a community makerspace and incubator in Wolfboro, walking distance from the regional middle and high school and career and technical education center. We want to apply what we do well to workforce development, particularly for people with disproportionate barriers to employment and rewarding livelihoods. We want to serve as a hub for creative rural placemaking. And early on in this journey, I met Molly when the nonprofit she worked for at the time sent her to see what Gala was up to. Thankfully so. We ended up helping you load pumpkins for the Gala farm to table dinner. <laughs> now I direct Pittsfield Listens. I work with young people and families in Pittsfield, which is a rural and economically disadvantaged community. We encourage the power and voice of historically marginalized youth, parents, and families on issues that impact their education and their lives. That means we work with young people to help them discover the power to lead and take their place at the table to affect decisions about school policy, school funding and budgets, town affairs. The discovery of that power can be life-changing I'm thinking of the eight youth leaders we work with who are about to head off to college, each first in their families to do so. It means we talk about identity, race, class, sexuality, gender, and the relationship between identity, inequities, and power. It means we support parents to build a stronger family school partnership so that all students succeed in the schools and beyond. And it means we see adults become centered with the civic life of their communities, 
vote for the first time, and even run for local office, inspired often by the leadership of their children. The communities that Josh and I live and work in are rural. The prevailing narrative says that people our age are leaving rural communities. That same narrative sells two stereotypes about rural places. One is a romantic, nostalgic, Andy Griffith, Norman Rockwell rural America. The other is a backwoods and backwards, lawless, deliverance rural America. But both stereotypes are typically portrayed as white, further making invisible rural communities of color. None of this is true or particularly appealing, lending to some of the reasons why people our age are leaving. We know from our lives and work that none of the stereotypes hold up. Until last fall, we actually lived in a former Grange Hall in Water Village, Ossipee. Granges, as many of you may know, used to be important community centers. We wanted to build on the history of the place, inviting community to belong and heal the ways that it hadn't. We now live in the farmhouse we've been renovating next door, but in the Grange, we continue to invite our neighbors in for potlucks, singing circles, puppet shows, clothing swaps, seed swaps, house concerts, film screenings, retreats with change makers, and anti-racism workshops. Are there things you wish your town offered? The field is wide open. Offer it. And another cool thing, you may find yourself with a network of people willing to help each other plow, stack wood, jump your dead battery when you need them. In many ways, it would have been easier to leave, to settle in a little city and enjoy the cool stuff people had already built. But choosing to stay and helping to create a new narrative about rural America feels way better. Thank you for hearing our story and for all the ways you enrich and weave the communities. Come visit us in Water Village anytime. <laughs>